line with the bottom of PVC or the barrel because everybody knows in big league and in big league lineup all the hitters can hit like this with the barrel coming straight up, right? Like this. So you keep the hula hoop in line, you can see it might be pretty good hula hoop. That's up the middle, that's pulling, that's right through. But with the head, you gotta have the bottom head. My bad, watch it. This, like this, and like this. Uh, Jeff Fry had a great career in the big leagues, and if 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 you didn't know, and you kind of landed on one of those fake hitting tutorials, you might think it to be legit because it looks like a lot of the stuff that's out there in the social media stratosphere. There are a lot of self-proclaimed hitting gurus that espouse that kind of stuff. That Jeff. And let me just add to this because he does it so straight that the very first one I saw. I had to text him and say, hey, were you serious with that? And then he said, no, I'm having a little bit of fun. So his dry pan face action that he just did right there, because first of all, I'd pull a neck muscle if I was actually trying that. So I wonder if he actually stretches before he goes and does his uh, hitting guru stuff. Let's ask him. Uh, Jeff Fry joins us, played in the big leagues for the better part of a decade and was a teammate of Bill Ripkins in Arlington in the mid-90s. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. And, you know, uh, Rip kind of turned me on to what you're doing there on social media at She Gone Hitting. Uh, and let me tell you, it brings a smile to my face just watching you kind of goof on some of this stuff. Uh, tell me about how this started, and are you getting pushback? Are you getting response? Fill us in. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I'm on a group text with a couple scout buddies of mine, and, and we, and, and Billy knows one of them, Dougie Witt. And uh, so we talk a lot about the, uh, some of the things we're seeing on social media. It's being taught to kids and we laugh about it and joke about it. So I made a video one day in the backyard. It was about 12 seconds and had my son uh, video me and I put it on social media and like within an hour I had 4,000 views and I couldn't believe it because I really hadn't done much on social media before that. But the backlash I got was it was incredible. I mean, people started direct messaging me, threatening me. I had, I mean, it was, I had to get Major League Baseball security because these guys were coming after me. And all I did was post a video that, you know, I'd seen on social media. So, and they don't know me very well. All that did was inspire me to make more videos. And now I don't know, I don't even know how many I've made, 40 or 50, but uh, I mean, it's kind of gone crazy to be honest with you. You know what's funny too when you when you when you did the first one like I said I reached out to you and said hey dude you got to play here but I know that that's not what you think and you you enlightened me but I got to go into some of the danger factor you go with because you came up with the machete drill and I don't know if I necessarily want to pass that along to too many youngsters right there but the banana cut and the machete that was classic right there how did you come up with that one I don't know, Ripper. I wake up in the morning sometimes. I'm like, I think I'm going to do this today. And all of a sudden, I just go make a stupid video. And, um, I did one similar to that with the eggplant because that one got such a, you know, such a great reaction. But the, one of the ones I never posted was one where I almost uh, lost my life. I was hanging myself upside down, and my son was about to leave. And I said, you might want to hang out for a little while because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this. And if he wasn't there to lift me out of these – these straps I had tied around my ankles hanging upside down, I probably wouldn't be here for this interview today. Well, the hanging upside down one, I know we have it because I knew the way you could hit. And, dude, you could hit. What? And you decided to hang upside down because you figured this was the only way you could uppercut. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, you know, my whole career, nobody ever taught me, first off, ever even talked about my swing or trying to hit the ball in the air. And actually, in the minor leagues, I used to get yelled at for hitting the ball in the air. So uh, just this whole new, this whole new idea that you have to lift the ball. I understand it. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So I want to get back to some of the pushback that you're getting because there are people out there who are really convinced that some of this new hitting philosophy is the wave of the future. People that are that are contacting you and shaking their fist, or is it is it is it parents? Is it players themselves? It's more of the instructors, the instructors that are they're trying to convince kids and parents that there's one way to be successful nowadays, and that uh, you need you have to do this certain way, and, and 
drop it in the slot and supinate and do all these crazy things that I've never even heard of. And the funny part is, is that, that the people that are teaching this, none of them ever played, or, or at least played at any you know professional baseball or anything. And I, that's one of the things I've always said is it didn't, doesn't matter to me if you play professional or not. It doesn't mean you can't be a great coach. Um, Ripper knows firsthand. Probably the best coach I ever had in professional baseball was Perry Hill. Perry Hill played in college. Now he's considered the best infield coach in the big leagues. So I'm not saying that you have to have been a professional to be a good coach, but when you didn't have any type of playing career and you're ragging on major leaguers saying they were no good, it's just kind of hard to take. Hey, hey Fry Daddy, I can't remember the guy's name, so you got to help me out here. Remember when we were hitting in the cage in uh, Texas? Me and you were down in the cage, and you hit a rocket off a of BP pitcher in his uh, rib cage back here outside the L screen. And after he finally got his breath back, he threw the next pitch, and you hit a rocket and hit him in the exact same spot. Do you remember who that was? Do you remember that? That's one of my best friends to this day, Ripper. His name is Jess Cole, left-handed batting practice pitcher. There it is. And, and he has that picture. Um, of the bruises on his back on his refrigerator because he said his wife wanted to kill me. <laughs> Dude, because when, when, when he started this interview and he said, these people don't know me very well, you know, this just inspired me to do... Right? And I'm standing behind the cage. I'm seeing it just perfect. Boosh! Thumped him. It, you know, the L screen's there, and I don't think we had that little angle protector. Okay. Hit him right in his back as he kind of turned. And then finally got his breath back and he hits him again in the same spot. And I remember going into the training room and he like lifted up his shirt. Baseball that overlapped on the bruises. That's the picture you're talking about? I said, man, stay behind the screen, dude. I told you. And, and I, I even had to make a little triangle net. I found some netting and made a little triangle with some bungee cords. So. From that point on, when he threw batting practice to me, I always went and rigged up the, uh, the L screens to make sure I wouldn't hit him. Hey, Jeff, where do people find your videos? Is it just on Twitter? Do you have a website? Where can people find this stuff? Well, you can go check out sheonhitting.com. Um, I'm on Twitter at O3JFry, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, that's about it. I mean, all they have to do is hashtag she gone. I think they could find the video. Hey, do me a favor. Since we didn't have any of the audio up on the inversion table in the machete, you got to give me a she gone like you did it outside. Oh, I have to do it like this. She gone. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Fry joining us on the Friday program. Jeff, thanks for the visit, man. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, River. Good, good talking to you, man. All right, Fry Daddy. See you. That was a lot of fun. In fact, uh, Bill was, was so enjoying himself, reminiscing with his old teammate. Did you catch that? That, that he <laughs> fell out of your chair. <laughs> That's what 30 a day will do for you. <laughs>